Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to get rid of this dark UI background screen thing in chess, like just this dark background thing, and also in inventory, and in like crafting tables and stuff, just basically every UI screen. Um, sorry I haven't really been uploading recently, I've had my hands full with college applications, college prep, and internships, just basic pre-college things. Uh, anyway, I'm really glad to have more time to record videos for you guys again, and uh, yeah, thanks for clicking on this video today. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is to start Minecraft and start Cheat Engine and uh, open the Minecraft process in Cheat Engine. Now go to Edit, go to Settings, and make sure you have a hotkey assigned for pausing the selected process because we're going to need that later. Um, you also might want hotkeys for doing next scan, like these, these four over here, but you don't need these, it just uh, kind of helps make things faster. I'll be using them in the video, but you don't need them. Just make sure you have a hotkey for pausing the selected process. Now, we have to make a few observations before we go further. So our first observation is that as we open the chest, the background kind of fades in. It doesn't instantly become this dark. It kind of takes time for it to uh, fade in. And our second observation is that it doesn't fully black out the background. You can still kind of see through it, but it's really dark. And if we think of opacity as a scale between 0 and 1, where 0 is, there's like basically no background, right? You can see through it entirely. And 1 is, it's totally opaque. Like you can't see through that at all, the whole thing is black. We know that this has to be between 0 and 1, and it's below 1. And I mean, it's obviously above 0, because it's pretty dark. Uh, what we can do is we can open the chest kind of halfway, and before the animation finishes, before it finishes fading in, we can press the hotkey to pause the game, like this. And now normally we'd scan for a um, scan for a value between zero and one, but we can't do that in this case because this game has so many values that are zero that if you scan, if you include zero in the scan, it'll take it'll take an annoyingly long amount of time to finish scanning. So we're gonna scan for zero point zero five instead because looking at this background here there's a really good chance it's more than five percent dark by this point right because we're like we've opened it a fair bit already so assuming that this is more than five percent dark we can press first scan and this will only filter out the values that we know for a fact like those there's no way any any values that got filtered out like there's no way those are the right values right because if they're not if they're not in this range then they can't possibly be the opacity so if we unpause the game we can scan for an increased value because it's finished fading in now. And now we can scan for unchanged because since it's finished fading in, it's it's not changed. It hasn't changed since we scanned for increase. Like after we've scanned for increased, it didn't change because it's already finished fading in. So we can, we can kind of spam unchanged. And you'll notice there's a whole lot of values here that are like way more than one. So those have to be the wrong values. So we can filter that by making sure every all the values are smaller than one. And, and we know it can't be exactly one because if it was, then we wouldn't be able to see through this at all. And now if we close this screen, we can scan for a decrease value because it'll be zero. Now, if we come here, we can scan for an exact value of zero. Uh, you guys might have noticed that this over here, I forgot to check this box. Uh, this over here, you can see that there actually is a background, but you don't need to worry about that, changing the background value of the chest, the opacity value of the background of the chest, because that's actually a different like screen from the pause menu. Each container kind of has its own screen, like a chest has its own thing, and another chest is different from another chest. So as long as you're not in a chest, it'll be zero. So we can scan for zero. And once we open it, we can scan for increased. And if we close it again, we can scan for decreased, open it, scan for increased, close it, scan for decreased, open it, scan for increased again. And you'll see that these values basically just stay here no matter how many times we scan for increased and decreased. So we can actually filter out all of these 0.4s because looking at this screen, it's pretty dark. So we can tell that it's, it's more than 40% dark. So it can't be these. And it looks about 75% dark. 
which is what um, these values are 0.75, and these look about right. So we can get rid of the rest of these. We can just ignore those. And now since we have uh, one of the one of these opacity values has to be the right opacity value. So whichever one we change to zero that causes this screen to go away is the right opacity value. So if I change this first one to zero, okay, this is the right one because it made the screen like be like it, it got rid of the background. Uh, it also changed the second value after we changed the first value, but that's not important. If we change this back to 0.75, uh, it, the background comes back. So we can actually delete the second value because we know that's the wrong address because this has to be the right one. So we can name this opacity or something. And while we have the chest open, we can come here and press F5. And we can check all the instructions that access this like continuously. So if we press stop, we can look at this first one here. And basically what this instruction is doing is it's multiplying XMM2 by whatever's in RDX plus 5, 8. So if it's zero, it'll just multiply XMM2 by zero and it becomes zero and it gets rid of the background. So uh, basically we can kind of change the assembly here so it's always zero. So we can press control A and then control shift F. And for now, I'm gonna temporarily comment this out and I'm gonna set XMM2 to zero by XORing it with itself. we enable the script, it does get rid of the background. The problem, though, is that it gets rid of everything else, too. So if you, like, open the pause menu, it also gets rid of the pause buttons. And I kind of like my pause buttons, so I can't really use a script in its current state. So we have to make a few more observations here. So if we look closely at this instruction, you'll see that this is RDX plus 5.8, meaning that it's probably, 5.8 is probably an offset of a field that's in the object that's pointed to by RDX. So basically, uh, we open the chest again, and then press F5. There we go. You can come here, and if we look at RDX, this is the pointer to kind of like the base object of whatever, whatever object the opacity is inside. So opacity is like a field of this object, if that makes any sense. And additionally, if we add 5.8 to this, it'll actually be the same address as this opacity over here. So now we can kind of look at what other fields in this object are going to be the same, um, like, for background screens, right? We want to check if we're actually changing the opacity of a background screen, or if we're changing the opacity of, like, the pause menu, because we only want to change the background screen. So if you press Control 7 you can change the view type to hex, 8 bytes hex, and we can make, uh, immediately, immediately we can see this over here is a little bit sus because it looks a lot like a string object and it actually is a string object. This over here is a pointer to like the like array of characters. You can press control G and paste the address in. Paste the address in and you will see that this over here is the string. And it says BG no safe zone screen panel and BG means background. So if we go back to the object, uh, you'll see that this over here is actually the length of that string. So one check we can do immediately is to just check the length of the string, and if it's equal to 1B, then we know that there's a much higher chance of it being a background screen. And if it's not 1B, then it's something else, and we can just not change the opacity of that, and we can just like let it be normal. So if we come back here, we can compare it by checking RDX plus 2.8, because this over here is at an offset from 2.8. If we um, take this address and subtract it by this address, the address, not the value, I'm talking about the address here, so like this address over here minus this, it'll be 2.8. You can also count up, we can go here, from here to here would be 8, from here to here would be 16, but since we're working with hex, it'll actually be 1.0. We go up again, it'll be 1.8. We go up again, it'll be 2.0. And then finally, it'll be 2.8. So we can actually compare, compare RDX plus 2.8 with 1B. And if it's not equal, we'll go to code and we'll get, put this back, right? So basically, it's checking if this is 1B 
And if it's not 1B, it'll just execute the regular code. And if it is, it'll set XMM2 to 0, which makes it transparent. And it'll jump to return. So let's see if this stuff. Here, we do check screen length. Check name length. How about that? Okay, now, when we run this script, it'll only change the background and, like, not the chest screen, not your hotbar. The only problem is that there are other things that share the same string length, right? So you'll see that these pause buttons kind of don't look right. And that's because the, like, the stuff that's drawn there also has the same string length, and we're basically getting rid of those too. And we don't want to get rid of those, we only want to get rid of the background. So if we come back into this object, you'll see that this here, um, if we go into the string, we can check the actual string to see if we're like looking at the right object here, like the right thing. So we don't actually need to check the entire string. We can kind of be lazy and just check the first eight bytes. So this will just basically be the first eight characters of this string. And we can do that by basically comparing it like a number. So if we copy this and come here, we can check the first eight bytes of the string. Check the first eight bytes of the name. And we can do, uh, first of all, we have to we have to actually get to this address, right? So if we come back, we'll see that this is at an offset of 1, 8 after this. So if we count up, it'll be 8, 1, 0, and then 1, 8. So we can actually use a random register. We don't have to be smart about it because like it's a small code. So I'm just going to use RAX for this. We're going to push the value of RAX because we don't want to like overwrite what's in RAX, right? We want to just borrow the register kind of, and we, we're going to put whatever value was in RAX back in it after we're done using it. So we're going to move the value of RAX to this, like, this value over here. So it's going to be RDX, oh, I can't spell, RDX plus 1, 8. And now we're going to want to use this value, right? We're going to compare whatever's in RAX with this, which is uh, what we copied from this string earlier. It's the same as this. We're just, we're just treating the first eight bytes of this string as a number, and we're just comparing it like a number. So if any of these bytes is different, this number will be different, and we know it's not the, we know it's not the same string. And now we can pop RAX, and from this compare instruction, we can jump not equals J and E to code. Because we know if it's not equal to this, then it's not the background screen, and we just want to execute the original code. So now if we press OK and enable the script, our buttons will be the same. We weren't we aren't messing with the buttons anymore because we're actually checking like, hey, we're not are we are we actually like changing the background screen? And for that reason we're not messing with the buttons anymore. And you'll notice that all of the background screens for everything are now clear and it doesn't mess with anything else. And uh, yeah, I hope this video helped you. I hope you learned something from this video. Hope you had fun following along. And uh, yeah.